All right. Hello, people of the... Don't do it. Don't... Oh, it was really good. <laughs> Stop it. That's what's causing the VPN to die. All right, we're just going to start over. Uh, those of you that are still in the chat will know that we had a massive VPN crater crash something. Um, we're back now with the hardware VPN, so fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I am American McGee. That's Martin. Don't say anything goofy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we today are going to be giving away some prizes. We're going to be going through art review. You're going to watch me play Alice Madness Returns, which I think I may set a record for being the longest let's play of Alice Madness Returns because <laughs> we only play for a few minutes every stream. I don't know. It's only been, what, like seven-ish hours now? Yeah. So. <laughs> um, and then we did mention that we have been collecting bits and pieces down here in the underground lair to give away as prizes. So today... Um, it's going to be kind of a mm. funny thing. We've got art prints. Uh, these are from Out of the Woods. Here, let me let me do this. Uh, where is it? There we go. Um, so these are images from Out of the Woods. I think that's the... I don't remember which card that is, but um, anyway, that's the that's block, block. block, and then that's... That's something else. Some guy holding up a castle. What does that mean? I forget. Anyway, it's, these, are, these are art print cards from uh, Out of the Woods, and then <laughs> we've got Martin's holding on to some stuff over there. Madness Returns design documents, mm. already bubble wrapped. And we've got these skulls. They're made from glass. I don't know if they're candle holders or they're for shots, or I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> again, it's just garbage we have down in the underground lair here. So yes. prepare. You, you <laughs> pre can win garbage. Prepare to win garbage. All right. Who do we have in Ooh. the chat here today? Uh, Octo Chicken's here. Nicholas. Michael Garvey says he promises not to tease you okay. today. Uh, Nicholas Brokaw, Nabi Yang's here. Um, who else? Seriously, Why Don't Girls Poop is writing out the lyrics to the song Hello by Lionel Richie, which, by the way, is my go-to song when going to sing karaoke. Is it? Yeah. Do you have a go-to song for karaoke? No. I don't. But we do have our first question, which we'll ask later to give away the first sets of uh, prizes. So I saw Lionel Richie singing Hello on Helium on YouTube the <laughs> other day. Just in, in recommended, that's like good. celebrities on Helium. Yeah. <laughs> Vin Diesel was pretty funny. So Octo Chicken says, today's prize is random junk off American's desk. Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, um, so Deep to the Peeps is here, hello again, and says, mm. explain again why the underground lair is being emptied, please. Yeah, so we've lived in this particular house in Qingpu District now since before Lucky was born. I think we've been here totally three years? Three? I don't know. It feels At least two. Yeah, at least two. Two and um, a half. So anyway, we're moving... Partly to just stop paying so much in rent. We actually pay quite a lot in rent here, and where we're going reduces our home overhead cost significantly. Uh, it's also a much bigger place, so that means that where you see here, which is our kind of like warehouse and work area and where we pack stuff, it needs to grow significantly because at the moment, half of our living room space upstairs <laughs> is covered in stuff that Yin is shipping out and her mom is packing up and so we basically the mysterious business plus the patreon stuff has just taken over too much space in this house and uh yeah seriously why don't girls poop uh says why doesn't martin just move in with you guys that's what i keep trying to say why don't you just move out there it didn't say move out there it says move in you can move <laughs> into our shao chu for very cheap yeah it's funny the Places out there, um, basically in where we are now, we're paying about $2,000 a month for rent, which is normal. And for Shanghai is actually very cheap for the size that we get to be here, partly because we're outside like the ring roads. We're not anywhere near the city, the city center. Um, you know, in the city, if you pay $2,000 per month, you're lucky to get like a, a maybe 100 square meter apartment for rent um and that would actually be too small for us to run our <laughs> business out of and also raise a kid and stuff um it's expensive downtown jingan super expensive and uh those houses in the city sell for like multiple millions of dollars um and where we're moving to to buy a house is a lot cheaper and then like in the shao chu where, where we move we're moving to martin could rent something the size of this for 2000 kwai a month which is equivalent to 300 bucks 1000 like 1000 kwai is 150 dollars so 
2,000 Kwai, which by the way is a third of what he's paying to rent a postage stamp <laughs> in the city. A so, postage stamp is two floors. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you keep... But it is a lot. It, you mean your rent is a lot for what you're getting? I guess. It is, actually. Yeah. Well, especially compared to the fact that you could live in a giant, like, giant castle for a third of what you're paying right now. Mm. Um, so that is one of the reasons, um, among others, why we're moving. Another thing about where we're going to is it's much more natureful. How do you say that? That's how you say it, natureful. Yeah, so it's a lot more natureful, um, and we would have a proper backyard, which then Lucky can um, run around inside of. So there's a there's a bunch of reasons why we're doing it. But it is a million miles away. Yeah, uh, yeah. Magna Gamer says, "Wow, China is more expensive than what I thought." Yeah, so China has actually overtaken the world's previous most expensive cities, like uh, Tokyo and Hong Kong. Shanghai, I shouldn't say all of China because there's still places in China that are really relatively cheap. Um, but the city of Shanghai is crazy expensive when it comes to real estate. And um, it, it's stuff in general. I mean, it's not. I mean, in the past, I don't know if they've done it much anymore, but in the past, definitely members of my family just assumed that everything is cheap. Like when I would travel back, it's, oh, just can you pick me up? Like. Maybe like diesel jeans or something like on the cheap or it's not <laughs> it's, i mean you can probably find fakes if you can find the fake market ah, again no! <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was gonna die already that would be that would be fitting for how quickly we we crashed the vpn this time yeah there used to be like a really good like black market fake market near me but that's gone i don't know if they exist anymore they have mainly cleaned them up so when i first moved here i think when you first moved here um, there were a lot of fake markets, and it seems like I can't that's, actually that's hit him. That's not happening. <laughs> well, and then he's being a jerk, and he's sitting there shielded the whole time, which means that when I do go to mess with him down there, he's going to already go on. be jump, on me. Jump uh, at him. I'm scared. Do it. I'm really scared. Do it. All right. Um, yeah, they got rid of all the fake market stuff, and in fact, a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of stuff happens these days. Hey, what are you doing? Well, he's got a good dodge. Oh, my... Nice. My thing's already... Oh, F's sake. Um, <laughs> my thing's already out of juice. Well, this, this guy is going to just kill stab me. Stab him instead. I'm, I'm working on it. It's hard to think <laughs> about, you know, the situation in China and explain it while also fighting a samurai wolf, wasp. Wolf? Wolf? Here. Wolf? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Man, I'm really sucking it today. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Maybe I anyway. shouldn't talk about the fake market stuff. It's it's cl cluttering up my brain. It is. Well, there wasn't really much else to say, other than China's probably not as cheap as a lot of people think it is, especially in like the big cities. Uh, it's expensive. Yeah. It really is. So yeah. yeah. What have we got? Um, what else is going on? Any newcomers? Names I don't recognize. Mama Basil. Basil, as we say in England. Um, H. Mott minks. I recognize mott minks. Bagels and cheese. Might be new. That sounds new to me. Yeah. Are we going over to check out more nudity? Yeah. Mm. She's just kind of over there. It doesn't seem Rev to have a purpose. Reverend Vargoth. Yep. Yeah. Little Buttercup 07, maybe. Yeah, Look, so uh, Lucky Dragon wants to know if you'll be talking about the latest Patreon post today. Uh, no. No. Everything yes, you wrote we will in the comments, we're going to ignore. All of it. That'll teach you for writing too much. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lucky Dragon, we are going to get to that uh, later on in the stream. And I, I just want to wait uh, a little bit so we can get all the other stuff out of the way and then give everybody a proper... Uh, Proper, you know, spoiler warning. I think that's the word I'm going for. Man, my brain really isn't working this morning. Uh, yeah, we will talk about that. I I do have your comments uh, put together about that. Oh, I remember this. This is what killed me last time. All right. All right. Well, kill him this time. <sighs> oh, look, I can become rageful now. What's that? Oh, I can't. I uh, can't do anything with that. Right. Did I oh just hurt? Oh, God. I'm dead. I'm so dead. No, no, you've got this. No, I don't. Oh, there's like these ruins around the border here that you've got to, you've got to uh, deal with. 
Can you die when you're in, um, in what's he mode? I think you can't. You're kind of invisible. But it doesn't seem to be helping much because he's also <laughs> clearly in, in, uh, invincible. Just blocking all your stuff. The tough he is. one. He is. Yeah, maybe, maybe you don't got this. Hey, what are you talking about? Maybe I do have this. Um. What Celtic Dragon Little is saying. Can you yet nurse curiosities of this Oriental stage? Can you what? Can you yet nurse curiosities of this Oriental stage? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't think that person knows what that means. But, uh, Mama Basil wants to thank us for the sacrifice of your queen print. Wow. Well, if, if you won it. Hey, then... look. Look at that. What did I do? I, I killed him. Did you die? No! Don't you think I would tell you if I died? I don't know, maybe. I'm really surprised. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> expect to, to survive that. I'll probably jump off the side now. <laughs> uh, is that a thing? Getting up there like this? No. What's happened here? You can get up there. You get up there. It's... Ah! Is there an invisible wall? Oh, no, that's it's, shoddy. It's just a really bad design. Invisible wall. I think I'm supposed to get there from here instead. Is that right? Yeah, okay. That's just me being shoddy. Uh, yeah, so Lucky Dragon, he asked if we were going to talk about this uh, this writing thing later. Um, we are... Um, I don't know, I think I can mention this. It's not too spoilery, because it'll, it'll appear to the player quite early in the game, I think. But um, the notion that we're working on is actually linked to this Asian... Uh, inspired level design, and that is that we're, we're playing around with the idea that the lawyer, um, which inspired this level design, um, he's called Radcliffe. I, Hieronymus? No, oh, is he Hieronymus or Wilson? I can't remember. Anyway. Daniel? No, that's that's <laughs> that's Spider-Man. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> I know it's Harry Potter. Yeah. I'm just joking, because he often gets confused with Tobey Maguire or Does whatever. He? Yeah. yeah. Or they get confused with one another. <laughs> there's that, and then there's it's the... rude. Don't look at that. What? It's fine. She's been airbrushed. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, Daniel Radcliffe gets confused with Tommy... Po to bleh, with that guy, Spider-Man. And he also gets confused with... Um, uh, what's his name? The Hobbit. Um, Elijah Woods. Your buddy. He wasn't my buddy. <laughs> he, I think, was quite annoyed by me. I never claimed to be friends with him. I just used to annoy him. <laughs> so anyway, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, so Radcliffe, the lawyer, um, we're suggesting that the narrative of Alice Asylum would bring him back into the, the mystery, maybe the conspiracy um, surrounding the death of Alice's family. It's the idea we're playing with right now. And then we're getting a lot of um, good feedback and uh, commentary from our insane children, uh, including our friend Lucky Dragon. Yeah. And I think Greg is in on it. Sounds like they're using the Discord for some good. Um, so here we go. Oh, Radcliffe. Mm-hmm. Odd duck. Very proud of his artifacts. All right, there so that go. would make sense, having more oriental themed. Uh, if I mean, Red Cliff's the thing. They they sort of mixed up the 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 notions there, right? He claim she her line of dialogue is kind of funny because she's saying that it's Ming Dynasty stuff, which means Chinese, but then she says samurai, which is Japanese, which is kind of the weirdness of this this level and this art design. Um, there is a mix of samurai wasps, at, 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 uh, you know, and then. Um, the Chinese style sculpture stuff, and I, I've mentioned this before. The, you know, some of the Chinese designers that worked on Alice Madness Returns, I think, you know, they intentionally use this as a bit of, uh, you know, historical commentary on the fact that Japanese samurai wi uh, uh, wasps have invaded an, an area that is mostly made up of Chinese art, and of course that is. Um, a reference to the sort of like the, the rape of Nanjing and all the negative history that ex occurred between um, the Chinese and the Japanese during World War II. By the way, if you think that what the Nazis perpetrated um, on the people living around them was bad, and it was, uh, I wouldn't dare to uh, minimize the damage and destruction that they caused. Um, but 
maybe don't go read about what the the Japanese did to the Chinese because um, it was so much. There, there are elements of it that were so much more premeditated and awful um, that you you just can't you don't even want to know about it. Um, and the <clears throat> Chinese still keep the notion of all that alive by. A, a, like TV series and movies. So it'd be kind of like how when the Americans make lots of movies about World War II over and over and over and over and over and over again, um, the Chinese do the same, um, but their primary enemy is not the Nazis, it's the Japanese. And if you go and read what it is that, um, the, that the Japanese did to the Chinese, you'll understand why um, they're still pretty sore about it. So, hmm. crazy stuff. Um... Living well, living hell asks. Well, they thought the term Oriental was considered offensive. Is it? Yeah, you'd better tell that to the Chinese people that are living in. Like, I know of multiple places around Shanghai and China that have Oriental in the name. They do. It's, <laughs> no, it's just everywhere. It's like everywhere. So it's like if, my, my internet provider. It's called Oriental Cable Network. Yeah. Uh, so I would say. Yeah, yeah. If it is way, considered offensive, that's probably just a bit of white knighting? Uh, yeah, it, it is, for sure. <laughs> so, um, that was uh, Alice recovering a memory, which would be critical to one of the things that uh, Lucky Dragon had mentioned, or maybe Greg, that, you know, you could argue that, you, know, you, can't, you will argue, you should argue that in the first game, the recollection of the source of the start of the fire was the cat. And then I think it was Lucky Dragon who said that we were retconning uh, the source of the fire by suggesting, well, in, in this game, that the cat... So that was the moment right there. She recovered a memory in which she remembered that Dinah was in her room, which means that A, she didn't start the fire, and B, did she die in the fire? <laughs> did she say... Did Alice not save her? Did Alice... The cat. Aww. So it means that Alice jumped out the window into the snow and didn't take the cat with her. I'm sure if there was an open window, she chucked a cat, the cat out. A cat would go for it rather than roast to death. Well, you'll, we'll never know. This is some a pretty serious uh, wasp versus ant abuse. I guess I, I should go in there and save them. Oh, sa save the ants. Why? Maybe I just let them suffer for a while. Isn't that kind of suggesting that? That the longer I sit here and don't do anything, that the more they're getting beat? Maybe. It's not very nice. What's wrong with you, Alice? Uh, Alright, I'll... I'll save them. Uh, I'm going to... I think I'm firing this here teapot at that guy. And... Oh, I got him. He Al doesn't, he doesn't Alpha 1412 says, Dina left first. Alice followed her. That's a, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so this is all, you know, sort of connected to, uh, it looks like they can't take damage from a distance while they're engaged in this animation loop. Bug. It's, if it's not a bug, it's just stupid. I mean, I'm right here. Oh, I see. Now you can dodge. Right. <laughs> sort of lame. What's wrong with you? Oh, come on. I'm trying to finish off the guy that I just splattered or teed or whatever that is. Yeah, so, you know, Radcliffe, I think, was not a very good guy um, in the first game. He certainly wasn't acting as a very good protector of Alice. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I feel like he makes a good object for investigation. And then we'll figure out what sort of relationship he had with Bumby and things like that. All right. Am I ready? Are you ready? Uh, what do you want me to do? Am I supposed to be doing... What? I lost my rhythm. Is it D-pad or buttons? Oh. Ah. I think it's deep, but now <laughs> I don't have any... Um... What? Seems quite chuggy. <laughs> it allows me to skip? Is this what we figured out before, was that I could... It's buttons. Oh, you've oh. lost your rhythm! All right, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm not gonna let this thing defeat me. Ah, uh, what? Are you gonna try one more time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like those puzzles. I'm not a not a big fan. 
yeah, so, um, yeah, there's there's a lot in this section of the game we're playing that actually relates to the the stuff we're exploring now for the narrative in the new game. So, anyway, we'll, we'll get to that in a little while. Mott Minx hates this part. Maybe they were referring to the... The, the music matching notes. stuff. Well, like you said, it's it's got quite a bit of lag on it. Um, so then you, uh, you you know, it's it's a rhythm matching game, but it doesn't have very good rhythm. Seems it. So that's not good. Hey, are those like uh, like ink wasps on me? I think that's what they were called. I remember? Ink wasps. But, uh, but they they come from these tablets, so you actually want to kill them first before you try to do other crap. Think. Hey, 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 you quit that. Get off me. <laughs> Come on, let me get out of here. Oh, you suck. Go oh, away. You, that, the, this wasp thing st sucks. <laughs> I think he needs, uh, what's he bomb? A rabbit bomb. That's his favorite thing there he is. shot with. Stab him. I feel like I've got um, teeth I should be spending on weapon upgrades, maybe. Maybe. Worth a look. You know, I, I think that um, probably the biggest change I want to make to the future games is this lock-on mechanic. <laughs> I think I've said that a lot. Uh, I'm really not a big fan of the lock-on mechanic. Some chat going on here about people losing Discord access. What the access. hell? What was that? She was just holding her arms up in the air. Oh, it was the stupid... Uh, what's he? Yeah, you tell them about Discord access, because that happens a Well, lot. it's... never figured out what it was. It just, um... I thought it might be because on Patreon you can tick a box that says you do not wish to receive stuff, rewards... I don't know. I thought that maybe it was that. But I don't think so, and then... I've, I've talked to Patreon, I think I've... Did I talk to Discord? Nobody knows! All I can do is just, like, manually send people links again, just to rejoin, it's... It's, uh, it's, it's been going on one. since... It's been going on since the, the first time we set up the Patreon. I mean, it's... The, the connection to Discord um, has never been incredibly stable. Right, so yeah, and we don't have a lot of rubbish control over it, other than to do what you do, which is to tell Patreon to reset it or whatever. So, yep, I just go into Discord, get a one-time use uh, server invite, right? And just send it to the person usually, or well, sometimes they're already in there, but they've lost all tags, right? So I just need to reassign them again. So. Yeah, it's nonsense. Don't uh, don't know why it happens. I, I wish it was fixed. But don't blame Martin. Don't blame it's not me. His fault. Did I destroy that piece or not? It looks like I did. No, it's still there. What is that? Oh, it's there. Okay. It's hard to see. I feel like our gamma is like really low today. You feel like that? Well, I'm looking at it from an angle, so I'm probably not seeing what you're seeing. Uh, it's very dark in the shadows, is what I'm seeing. Shadows are dark. <laughs> Seems accurate. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think we we discussed this previously of the notion of what shadows are, because there's other interpretations of uh, shadow um, than the classic one that we all were taught in school. But anyway, we're not going to get into that right now. But we we had talked about that when we were discussing the idea of um, Shadow Alice. Not Shadow from the UK version of Gladiators. He was a tough guy. I uh, is that like one of those jump through hoops yeah. TV shows with the batons <laughs> and stuff? Yeah. yeah, that was good fun in back in the day. I used yeah. to love watching Gladiators. <laughs> um, got any other interesting? Somebody living well at hell <laughs> Somebody again. Somebody says they're surprised. At yeah, how well I'm doing. Surprised at how you are. You're, you're doing all right. Uh, uh, well, uh, well done. I had one death early on. Didn't I? Uh, Maka Rosh says, can't wait for asylum. Thank you for your work. Best wishes from Lugansk, the war region in Ukraine. Oh. All right. Wow. Yeah, we have, um, we have a friend living in Crimea who is one of our um, programmers on various spicy horse... Ah! Ah! No! No, I was Ooh. doing so... Oh, come on. Oh, my Ooh. God. 
Look, Martin, don't fall into the trap. It's all just a, a simulation. Okay. I'm actually really good. I just pretend yeah, to be bad. That's why I was playing along. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Alexander. Yes. You still talking to him? Yeah, he's, of course. What's he's, he doing these days? Uh, he's working... For us. <laughs> he was working on optimizing the mysterious shop, but um, he's kind of given up on that. Because he's got yeah. another job that, I don't know, does something. So, I could really use a flower right about now. I feel like I'm, I'm playing right on the edge, and I hope I'm not going into like an instant death here. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. But you'd hope there would be a save point right here. I'm gonna die. I can tell by the look of this. This looks like a trick, full <laughs> of death. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so we do have um, Alexander, uh, and then we had um, the producer on Alice Madness Returns moved to Kiev. And they said that they were riding around on their bicycles in the city while there were tanks rolling around right. um, during the, whatever, Orange Re Revolution or something like that there. And okay. they said it was pretty unsettling. Um, that they would see people walking around with, like, rocket launchers flung <laughs> over their <laughs> backs. So, uh, you want to talk about the, the supposed insurrection in the U.S. Uh, maybe should be seeing an actual insurrection <laughs> before you compare <laughs> compare it to whatever that was, yeah. Which we're not going to talk about because people like to get angry about that topic. They do. Yeah. Uh, Aaron789 just joined the Patreon. Glad to be supporting such a great team. Also happy with the calendar I got. Oh, damn it. Well, glad you like it. And thanks for joining. It's a good calendar. It's a very nice calendar. And we found out the other day that we barely make any money <laughs> shipping those out. <laughs> Cost a lot to ship. $20 US to ship that calendar to somebody. Um, so every time you get a calendar, if you bought it on the Mysterious Shop, I think we figured out we we make like $5 or something. Really minus, is that right? In an extreme case, but I think... I would expect at least 10 in most what? cases. Right. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, the profit margin on that is destroyed by the way it's packaged and shipped. It's just packaged um, well, though. It is packaged very well. Um, what am I supposed to do here? I feel like I've, I've lost my way. Um, is there like a knob to pull on or something? I feel like I saw... <laughs> not your knob. <laughs> okay, pull on that I couldn't later. find that without a, a microscope, so... Um... <laughs> It looks like I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody had a great question. But you missed it. It scrolled past. Oh well, no, where did the idea of teeth as currency come from? Um, we've talked about that before. It's, actu it's actually linked to the idea that people for a very long time uh, used to bury teeth. It, it was the pre-version uh, of the Tooth Fairy, basically. And uh, they were buried for wishes and good luck. And um, so anyway, the, the collection and use of teeth for magic has been a, a thousand plus year human behavior. Um, so that's, that's why we started doing it. Or that's why we linked it in the game. Um, is because it is an old sort of thing that uh, mankind has been known to do. Mm. So we thought it would be an interesting Oh, this is the dumb weighted, weighted platforms. Is that right? Maybe. Are they all sinking down because I'm standing on them? What's going on here? <laughs> Maybe I'm supposed to go get on this one and then wait. That's tedious. One. It's not moving. <laughs> so I've got to get off of them so they can all rise back up, and then I have to run to get to and time it so that no, no. The button you pressed on, you pulled that chain down from the fish's mouth. Hey. Anyway, uh, we're gonna maybe let this puzzle boil us because we've gone past thirty minutes. We can't play yeah, for more had, than thirty minutes. We had a minutes. shoddy start, didn't we? We did. Oh, that's right. There's an extra seven minutes tacked onto this thing. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll play until forty, and then we'll do the um, the first prize. All right. Wasn't the teeth thing also something to do with, like, dreaming your teeth came out, represented something creepy or other? Yeah, if you dreamt that your teeth came out, it was a premonition that you were going to die oh or something like that. Oh my god. Like something, you want to call that creepy or... It's kind of creepy. But it is. 
That does, that's lame. Making it, it where it's one of these micro distances that makes it where you can't make the jump. That's that lame. wasn't not making the jump. That was an invisible wall preventing like you from making the jump. It felt like it, didn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, what's happened here? I, surely it's not just like you missed the jump. Now Put you, the rabbit on the button. Somebody farted. Oh, right. Right, right. Is it anonymous? Thanks, somebody, for farting in my ear. I, I, <laughs> I just forgot about the button. This is not very good um, design because this... Go, go, go! This makes the, the puzzle mechanic not very central to your path, right? And my meaning is normally in a situation like this, you would want to leave that button in a conspicuous place, right? You go left. Some exploration, let people do something. And they got I got a fart in my ear for my trouble. You did? <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that wasn't, uh, that really wasn't worth it. It's kind of weird. Adios, aquarium. Martin, please look at the chat, they say in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do look at the chat, I'm Martin. looking at the chat. Now you do a terrible job of looking at the chat. <laughs> I can see big, bold text out of the side of my, my eye over here, so I know somebody's just said something they want you to read. I'm going to read it. <laughs> oh, boy. Portal Diver. Guess what? Akinero Demon Hunters is alive. Oh, Alexander posted So that's posted what Alexander new... did. <laughs> if you want to a know what Alexander patch in the Steam forums, and the game is back up and running again. Wow, amazing! Ooh. I have no idea where any money generated by that is going. It's... Might be worth looking into. Yeah, that. <laughs> it could be sitting on millions. No, it's <laughs> not millions. Millions of pennies. So the thing that happened was when we shut down Spicy Horse, um, the bank account, the business bank account linked to Spicy Horse, was also shut down. And then I went and contacted Steam's support, developer support, and said, hey, this thing is no longer, this bank account is no longer functional. And, um, and I, but I couldn't, couldn't deactivate monetization in the Steam account for some reason. And then I tried to move the money flow, because like, Grim is over there as well, right? And Grim makes a little bit of money. Right. So what I understand now is that the money's trying to go to an old bank account um, and is being probably sucked into the old bank account and lost, or uh, sent back to Valve, and then they're just sitting on it and stealing it, basically. They could so. be. I mean, I'm not going to say they're sitting on a fortune, but, I mean, it must have been several years since you've even looked at that. Well, um, I do have somebody, uh, the guy that's now working on Mysterious Shop, um, that guy is gonna try to go and reconnect that account, so we'll see. Anyway, it's good right. news. Is that thing busted? Maybe. I feel like it's busted. Did you know that you cannot eh? I did not know that you cannot eh. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. That's that's that was a perfect <laughs> ending. Okay. Um good. Well there we go. I bought a bunny in late December. Do you know when it would come? That's what uh, live. That's that's why we live stream is to support. answer customer support questions during live on air. Wouldn't that be weird if <laughs> mm -hmm. like some company or something did actually have like a live stream for customer support? Yes. Um, Post so is effed in the A currently. Uh, things are taking a long time. Wait, that's confusing. Just the postal system and shipping in general is broken these days. What Mainly, said. no, you said F and the A. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> anyway, if you ordered something from Mysterious and you didn't yet get it, um, and then you're saying you don't have a tracker of any kind, send an email to Martin at support at mysterious dot design, and then Martin can look it up. First, check your spam folder. Yeah. A lot of tracking seems to be going into spam these days. There you go. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, expect a month at least. Mm. Sorry, that's yeah, just yeah. the world we're currently living in. There you go. Hopefully things are going to get better now December has finished. So we'll see. There you go. Um, bagels and cheese. Sorry, I, I wasn't mm. sure if that was bagel bags and anyway. Uh, so bagels and cheese says since Lizzie's trauma was hinted at during AMR, 
Do you think we could explore that a little bit further in Alice Asylum? Also, I love your games. Keep up the great work. Um, I hadn't really thought about too much related to Lizzie. One of the reasons is that this is a very distinctly personal story for Alice, and I don't know how much... So Lizzie was really talked about in the last game because she was one of the targets of Bumby's disgusting infatuation. Um, and it made sense to have her as a part of the story because you want to know more about all of his victims. Um, Lizzie isn't really kind of involved in the story that's happening <clears throat> in Alice Asylum. I suppose she will get mentioned and you'll see her and you'll see memories of her, but I don't think that this some sort of exploring her specific trauma uh, makes a lot of sense, so we'll see. W.W. Sane Pie, well, maybe a new name with a, an icon that I don't recognize. Really wanted to appreciate you. My first game as a toddler, five or six, was American <laughs> McGee's Alice. Your parents on should Windows. be in jail. You have terrible parents. I played with my father. I absolutely love that game, and it's pretty close to me. Uh, nurtured my love for gaming and helped me through dark times. Go. Excellent. Uh, thank you for that comment. Um, someone's asking about Alice Asylum tarot cards. I We can't do that unless we get permission from yes. EA. So we want to. We desperately want to do that, but it's going to have to wait. And we're looking into it quite fervently at one point, Yes, but it's going to have to wait. Uh, and I think we mentioned on the last stream, things in the U.S. are basically shut down these days and since the Christmas period. Now, they should kind of start to wake back up again, uh, but I usually don't try to bother Western people with business development until the end of January because I just know that when they come back from the break that they started prior to Thanksgiving they have weeks of catching up to do um, for all the, the work that they didn't do uh, prior or you know during during the the Western holiday break and I know that they would have they would sense this sort of uh, the stuff we're trying to do with Alison they would consider to be quite low priority um, so my sense is to give them time to get caught up and then we'll go back and start poking them about this stuff. So hope hope to have some updates on the EA side in February. February. Okay. All right. Uh, we need to give away a prize. Yeah. Now the, the thing... Oh, did we, did we say the prizes in the broken stream or this stream? I think it was this stream. It was in this stream, but right. also we decided prior to any stream that we were going to be cheeky about the way that we announce who won what. Yeah, because we're going to say it at the end? We're going to tell you that you won, but we're not going to tell you what you won until the later on in the stream. Which doesn't really matter, because um, you'll know you won something, and you can send your address stuff, and then we'll randomly decide what you get. That's just a mean way of making people stick around till the end. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Um, now, there is... Um, you said you had a question. Well, yeah, we, we had it before. It was... Something about karaoke. Yeah, what is your go-to karaoke song? That's the question. So if you want to be entered into the giveaway, you need to talk <clears throat> um, chat, talk in the chat so that Nightbot sees that you exist, and then... Nightbot. Is being Nightbot. It's been a Nightbot. <laughs> Uh, I hope it's not oh. completely disconnected. Oh, there we go. There all right, there go. you go. Now you're all showing up in there. So, yes. so now back to the question. So I said that Hello by Lionel Richie was my, one of my uh, go-to karaoke songs. I, I'm also a big fan of Your Song by Elton John. Um, I also like to sing Bon Jovi's um, Dead or Alive. That's a good one. <laughs> and... Uh, Robbie Williams' feel is very high on the list, along with Coldplay's The Scientist. Now, Scientist is a good choice. So normally when I go to the karaoke place, I, I load up, there's probably like 10 go-to songs that include those interleaved with what my friends are, are singing. So When you say normally, when was the last time you went to karaoke? Uh, probably three or four years ago. So, you know, having <laughs> a small baby around is not conducive to going out and staying out late. I don't have a go-to, but I probably, I think I remember singing some James Blunt in the past, mm. after a few beers. I don't really have a go-to. There you go. Well, yeah. look, somebody else has The Scientist. That's uh, Symbol Terius, also likes to sing. Totally Clips of the Heart. That's a good one. 
literal total eclipse of the art is hilarious yes. on YouTube. Ah, yes. Watch it if you've not seen it. I know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> what do we have here? We've got Tequila, says Evolutions 9. Um, the Tequila song is very funny. Uh, I don't carry often, but The Scientist by Cold... Oh, that's the yeah. same guy, okay, or girl. I don't know what that what is. What the fuck says? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's just lots of weird animal sound effect noises. So, it's a stupid song. A. Aaron 789 says, Any Tears for Fears song... Mm. But the problem I have with Tears for Fears is I can't hit those notes. The, the guy, the lead singer, um, Roland... Is that Roland Emmerit? Is that his name? Anyway, he sings in a way that I can't emulate at all. So Right. Um, yeah. Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick, says Michael Garvey, your friend. Angel of Death. Oh, Take Me Home Country Roads is a good one. That's John Denver, says Nicholas Brokaw. That's good. All I right. was trying to think of an 80s song the other day, and I can see, I can see the video in my head. I can't remember who did it. Who, who sang the reflex? The reflex is um, Duran Duran. Duran Duran. There you go. That's it. I couldn't couldn't remember Again, Duran Duran. I'm a big fan of Duran Duran <laughs> for that era of music and a lot of um, that you know like Duran Duran songs. I'm really a big fan of. Again, I can't sing anywhere because that's Simon LeBond. Is that his name? Mm. Um, he owned a sailboat caused, uh, called uh, Drum. If I remember correctly, a racing boat. Anyway, I know I I'm a big fan of Duran Duran, but I cannot sing that style. Isn't Duran Duran like a sci-fi name from a movie, just like Tapau was? Oh no, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, Deeps to the Peeps says some Depeche Mode, but I'm telling you, I'm a big fan of Depeche Mode as well. That is not a good karaoke song. That's why, like. I would say to you, I would listen to, um, uh, sing some of the songs, like Lionel Richie. I'll sing Hello, because it's a fantastic um, karaoke song, but I don't normally listen to, to Lionel Richie, right? But that is a very fun song to sing. Um, but a lot of the songs that I really love to listen to, I can't sing. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. We're going to roll it. Roll it. And that person, we're not going to tell them what they won. It's Scary151. Didn't they? Their, their name is right there. They, they won, won the last, last, last stream. That's not fair, is it? Are we supposed no. to take their prize away from them? Well, we didn't say that they couldn't win again. All right. Well, uh, here you go. Scary151, you have won today's first giveaway, but we're, we're going to randomly assign you your your gift later on <laughs> truth decay says stop the steal <laughs> <laughs> because i guess scary is stealing the prizes maybe um so anyway we'll we'll uh fact, choose... i'm, I'm going to write the prize down now scary can have uh you're not going to say it out loud are you good all right so moving on that. let's do uh let's do your mom <laughs> Okay. Art review. Now, I want to tell you we don't have a lot of new art to review for today. Um, a lot of the artists are deeply involved on various illustration tasks at the moment, but they haven't delivered like rough sketches or final illustrations that we can share with you. So some of what you're going to see today, actually, I think we showed this one before, but not on fire, I believe. Yeah, I think that the fire stuff wasn't in the li last live stream. So this was updated. Her umbrella's been removed. It looks weird now. She's just hanging in the air. Correct. So I said to Joey, there's a couple things she needs to do. First of all, this fire is, re it's not right. <laughs> I almost said the R word. Um, so, you know, it's not, the, the people that are here in the, the morning section or whatever, um, they're not meant to be on fire. It's, the, it's these coffins, but it's really hard right. to make out that there's even a coffin in there. Um, but there is a coffin in here, and it should be on fire, but the way she's done this, it's not highlighted enough. Now, I had previously told her, hey, none of this light, this sort of living green stuff makes any sense because this is supposed to be a scene about death. So she just set that stuff on fire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I also mentioned that um, this looks weird. 
it, and I said at least yeah. a minimum should be she should put a bunch of butterflies underneath her to kind of show that she's doing some sort of float mechanic. It should be more billowing of that dress. But the, the problem I have really is that this scene is, is the way I described it in the writing was meant to be her, and it says it, literally says, Alice walking down the aisle. Right. And so in my mind, this Alice was supposed to be somewhere here walking through this towards the burning caskets and the caterpillar. Um, now I did ask for this god ray, <laughs> but she right. didn't. She didn't light up the caterpillar with it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> anyway, this has been a weird one. I'm not sure. Um, She'll get there. She will. So it is on her white her work pile list, and she will be turning that in soon. I think. Ooh, look at this one. Did you? I did. Did we see this one before? Yes. I can't remember if we showed this on the last live stream. But this is, We're showing it again. This is meant to be the heart of the moon, and um, it is what she disconnects to kind of destabilize and, and anyway, make the, moon, <laughs> make the moon fall out of the sky. And um, this is actually one of the pieces that she collects in order to revive and improve the Jabberwock. Right. Um, now... I, I think I remember why I put this in here uh, is because Yin, my wife, she is she has made or is making I don't know what, what stage she's at, but she's she's working on this. Um, and now this is a wallet. Um, as you know, my wife is a fashion designer and she she makes clothing and wallets and stuff and. She works with Jen on our plush toys and things like that. Anyway, so she saw that piece of art. And she was like, that's super cool. Uh, can I use that for a wallet? And I'm like, sure, why not? Um, so she's made this little coin purse card wallet. I'm not, I think it's meant to hold like a few credit cards and some coins or something. Nice. Um, I suppose you could put your weed in it as well. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, she took that piece of art, the original piece of concept art that Joey did, and she plastered it onto the wallet. So I don't know. If you're mm. interested in that, it will come to the... Uh, it'll come to the mysterious shop at some point in the future. Soon, maybe. Maybe soon, yeah. But uh, yes, this is next month's print. Is it? So oh. yes, those patrons at the correct tier charged in February will uh, will get this. Hmm. And yes, if they're at the 75 tier, they'll also get a hysteria bunny. Is that right? Is yeah. It, it's, wait, that, this, that's this month. Oh, it's any month going forward. It is any month, but and it's Fe retro. February is a good month to do it because of this awesome print. <laughs> but there's also, you said, a kind of retroactive, like, if you had been at $75 at any point, or you, and then you come back now, even if you'd got a chaos necklace previously, you will now get a bunny. Is that right? Yeah. For everybody? Okay. So just because you previously got the old 75 tier reward, you could do still... Doesn't matter. You'll be getting the new one because we're so good to you. Is that why we do it? I thought it was because we were trying to spread virus around the world. That as well. Oh, okay, cool. I just I get confused <laughs> sometimes what our mission in life really is. Um, so yeah, there is a rabbit. It is it is a hysteria rabbit. I don't think we don't have one on the desk here at the moment. Do you remember if it's in one of these? In the Patreon post. Uh, but I've got that loaded up to the to the story stuff. Mm. So I don't really want to. Oh, you got your Instagram up. Probably there. Oh, yeah, it probably is there. Okay, let's go look at my Instagram. There it is. Wow. Yeah, so this is the thing you can now get being a patron. Assuming... Oh, What's need to, happened? need to start web review working again. Oh, no. OBS has been really poop today. Where is web the... browser? That's really weird. Yeah, we have been having a lot of technical difficulties today. Um, Instagram. There we go. Hey, there it is. Okay, so anyway, this is the Hysteria Rabbit. Uh, this is the thing we're talking about right now. He's got his own little devil worshipping bag, and he's got his own little, <laughs> like, alchemy stitched up bloody eye business going on. Um, so if you like this thing and you want one, that would be the way to get it, at least in the first half or so of 2021. Yeah, not quite decided how long it's going to be a patreon exclusive for but it's definitely going to be several months yeah there you go um so that's that piece of art now what else have we got 
Um, this was her work towards the final piece. I do feel like we showed this before. Like the ori original rough sketch and then her kind of 3 d of it. Anyway. I don't think so. No? No. I really thought, I don't know, ask the chat. Did we show this before? Mm. Oh, we're showing it again. So somebody says, Alpha 1412 says... Alice shrunk here because that heart is too big for the Jabberwocky. Kind of, not really. Um, the reason <laughs> is that the heart resides in the moon, but the moon resides in a smaller scale. So at this point, Alice is already small. Well, everything here is tiny. Because there is a scene later on where you will see Alice is holding the moon in her hand. Um, which means that the heart itself is also going to be quite small. Where is that image? I thought that was holding the moon. Early holding the moon was over on Instagram. There it, there is. it is. All right. So um, there is the image called holding the moon. Um, so that kind of explains to you. Ooh, this one's even animated. Uh, that explains to you the scale relationship between Alice. And this is sort of like normal scale, what you see in the background. She's in the, this is in the garden in the queen's domain. Um, so then the moon, the moon is shrunk down, which means that inside the moon, there's like a little tiny heart in a sense, like scale on this kind of stuff is, can be a little wonky. And then by the time she hands the moon to the Hatter to sort of Jabberwock 2000 him, um, then the moon can kind of grow up or whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, scale, scale is kind of funky in Wonderland. I think we all know that. I think so. Okay. Why don't girls poop? He's asking how my diet is going. How is your that diet going? That must be a previous diet. Show them what you're drinking. Because there's no way that they know that I just started another one like two days ago. Show them what you're drinking. Actual water. Oh my god! Not tasty water. You, boring water. The stuff you refer to as tasty water could be like somebody calling Coca-Cola tasty water. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when I drink a margarita. Mm, this is tasty water. <laughs> I'm, look, there's some ice cubes in my margarita. There's tasty water. <laughs> but uh, yes, for the last couple of days, I'm trying to do like a super fast and drop a bunch of weight in like a week. So yeah, it's just water and eggs currently. And but you I'm cook the eggs though, right? Yeah, boil, boiled them. eggs or omelette. I don't know. The way you said that, it sounded like you may be drinking the eggs. Yeah. Come on, you'd like that. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, giving myself like seven to ten days to drop five kilograms. Ah! Ah! Look, that's tasty water coming out of her, mm. her mouth there. Tastes like blood. <laughs> uh, well, good luck on your diet adventure, Martin. I think you, you can... You can do it, like, if you've got a lot of weight to lose, and right at the very beginning, if you hit it hard, it drops off fast for a few days. So, I, re I reckon I can do five kilograms well, in seven to ten days. Uzeline, Uzeline 30 says, if the plan works, share it. Well, I'll tell you, like, what works, and I think it's what you're doing. You're doing... Um, intermittent fasting because you're you're waiting 12 hours uh between two of the meals that you have each day mm -hmm. and you're drinking a ton of water mm -hmm. uh, intermittent fasting is what i use to um kind of just clean up my system and my my wife does as well it basically just means that you you don't actually reduce the amount of food intake that you're doing assuming that you're not like regularly eating six pizzas a day but if you're eating regular like the calories you're supposed to eat you just create a space of at least 12 hours between some of the meals that you eat and then you don't eat at all between meals like you don't snack um, and that allows your metabolism uh, <clears throat> time to function properly so there you go that's what you're doing well we'll see we'll see how it goes okay uh, so here we go. We are, um, so seriously, why don't girls poop says, I hate hunger pangs, so I can't do intermittent fasting. Here's the thing, seriously, why don't girls poop is that hunger pains are temporary. Um, if you really pay attention to it, you'll realize that you only feel hungry for about 10 minutes and then they'll pass. And then by resisting the hunger pains more and more and more, you will train yourself to basically not have them. Um, but yeah, hunger pains are, they are temporary. And they can be ignored, and you won't <clears throat> die as a result. So, 
There you go. There you go. Sage yeah, so advice. Looking Glass Zero says intermittent fasting will reset your appetite too. That's correct. You will start to eat less in general and you won't feel hungry as often once you start to do proper intermittent fasting. Stop beer as well. Yeah, you're not supposed to have beer. I uh, went to uh, Campari Spritzers. That's fine. That's right. <laughs> You'd be better off drinking like a shot of vodka once a day than drinking beers. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's cleaner alcohol that'll process faster. Anyway, enough about... Have, have we become a diet channel? Maybe we have a lot of luck with that. Alice in Dietland. Uh, speaking of Alice in Wonderland, so this is a, this is a new one. Um, but I think we, we shared the early version of this on the last stream. This is an insane child. And uh, you know because he's got his, his brain in a wooden clamp set up. Yeah. But yeah, so this is an insane child. And he has taken up work for the queen so he is rebranded as the knave um, and so he kind of tries to suggest alice stop her mission to go to meet the queen but at the same time he kind of helps her and uh anyway this is where he is seen to meet with alice for the first time and then he kind of follows along on her journey for several scenes to come um, as she heads through the queen's <laughs> gardens and through this area called judgment and finally to the um, the dungeons and the queen's throne room. So he he's got a fairly long distance part of uh, Alice's journey to um, to be in various scenes. Yeah. All right. That's pretty cool. But it's not quite finished, then, is it? This. I think it is basically the, finished. The, the Alice I... and the the entailed child are just far more detailed than the scary stuff on the left. I thought there might be a bit more detail coming. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm okay with the way it is. Because a lot of the work we're trying to do here is, is just trying to move through the narrative quite quickly and, and flesh out some of these scenes visually. I don't know that we need to put too much detail in them once they get kind of the basic message across. I don't know. To become an art print anyway. Maybe. Um, I'm not a big fan of this Alice up here. I, in the original notion... Going on in the eye. In there. Yeah. Like, as in, is there something that you... Oh. Ah! Ah! It's a backwards four! So it's just kind of glossy. It's a mushroom cloud of <laughs> nuclear death. And what, what's that? I don't know. Anyway, I can see a backwards four, which makes sense because in China, four is like their version of 13. Because the way that, that four sounds as a word is very similar to the way that death sounds as a word. Dun, so dun, dun. you know how we like will skip the 13th floor in a lot of buildings? Well, in China, they skip the fourth floor. And mm -hmm. then... Um, in Hong Kong, they're su superstitious about 13 and 4, <laughs> <laughs> so they skip both. Right. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's a backwards 4 and a oh, mushroom okay. cloud. It's, it's pretty demonic. All right. Uh, what's the next thing we got in here? That I think I shared on Patreon and Instagram, yes. but I don't think we had it in art review last time. We had the sketch. We had several sketches. Of the, the commenter, it was like the Iron Giant had a baby with the Statue of Liberty. Correct. But I think in the last <laughs> go-round, it was still black and white. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Trigger Happy O2 says, all the superstitions. You know, Hong Kong is, I think it's famous for being the place with the most holidays because they celebrate Chinese holidays uh, they, they they celebrate American kind of New Year's and Christmas um, and some other American holidays. I think they might even honor Easter or something like that. Um, they do Halloween. And then they also have a bunch of Buddhist holidays. And they have there's some other ones. I can't remember exactly, but uh, some sort of traditional Chinese holidays as well. So in essence, you then end up with like a month of a, of every year in total being about holiday days off <laughs> so <laughs> I, th I think they're at the top of the list for that so yes they have all the superstitions um and they have all of the kind of british and american holidays and all the chinese holidays and all that kind of stuff mm. okay anyway this this is the hatter taking alice on a guided tour of the story to date um so this is something that will happen in any story you many stories you you watch there's a moment of exposition to establish the background story that is relevant to what you're stepping into um so in this case hatter is taking her on a, on a wild visual ride through a bunch of his creations and robotics and stuff to explain to her 
that you know sort of chaos has been unleashed <clears throat> in this version of of Wonderland, and that um, something needs to be done about it, or they're all going to die. And he looks very happy while he's explaining it. He looks dead chuffed to be in his teacup. Um, Jesus, that's, um, how much cocaine could he put in that nose? That's a <laughs> lot of... I mean, it's just a massive amount of... Anyway, that's not good. That's not child-friendly. We should reduce the size of his blowhole. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's kind of... It is, I don't know. He's kind of... He's mad. I guess. That kind of makes sense. Um... I did see a question here from uh, Bagels and Cheese, or Bag L Sand Chez. I want to know who or what killed the monster with the Vorpal Blade in its skeleton in uh, Madness Returns when you first get it. Yeah, well, that ought to be a, rem a reminder of Alice's previ previous battle with it. Um, I think that's what it's meant to be. Now, why, you know, we didn't see her kill the Jabberwock and then her blade fell and what no i mean so i i don't know it's i think it's meant to be kind of a reminder of the jabberwock was murdered and then it was done with the vorpal blade in the library by the butler and that's it octo chicken is getting gene wilder willy wonka vibes i think that's right um that that is the vibe we were going for and um i mean wasn't there sort of the ride that he took the kids on and then Marilyn Manson turned that into a song and it was kind of redone with him as Willy Wonka, right? Am I right? I don't know. I do remember that ride that he was on though, when it was all like psychedelic flashing yeah. and going through the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Apparently the other actors were not told about what Gene was Wilder was just gonna go mental right. on them. Yeah, yeah. So their reactions in that were actually like genuine. Yeah. I mean, it's the same story, like Ridley Scott hid the alien creature models from the actors in Aliens. Yeah. And I think that he also, they hid the chest burster scene, like they didn't, yeah. they didn't let the other actors know that there was going to be a bloody chest burster coming out of that. So I heard. Yeah, so I don't know, that's it's a technique. And the old, the other famous one, wasn't it uh, Die Hard? Yes. They dropped Alan Rickman before... The three, two, one count. Right. So his shocked face Was is real. genuine shock. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. It's a good technique. Um, all right. So this is another scene that's recently getting worked on. Um, again, a lot of this is happening. Well, all of this is happening as we go through the narrative scenes that are described in the Alice Asylum story out outline. So if you go over to Web Review. Um, you can go to the Patreon post that's linked to this. I think it's a, it's a couple of posts back. I should probably put the link to the post. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know. You, you can go and find it. Um, I think also, if you're joining us for the narrative crowd design stuff, it's actually worth going and clicking on the link um, because I'm still writing a lot of stuff into this document at the the back of the document. So there's a bunch of um, notes in here. So I'm, I'm putting my current work in here and I'm also doing some scribbling <laughs> off, off, offline, not in Google Docs. But the scribbling that I like, I end up copying and pasting into this document. And so that was the thing that I posted um, on Patreon two days ago or something, three days ago, that our insane children have been actively um, commenting on, which is great. Um, so anyway, all that stuff is is over there on this document, and um, for those of you that are interested and don't mind spoilers, a lot of the story outline stuff is contained here as well. <clears throat> now, Alex and I have a ton of back and forth, and we he's generated a couple of documents that we've not shared yet. Um, so these images that we're sharing, though, these are all taken from what's been written and kind of approved for what will be contained in the story. And this is a scene where... Alice follows the white rabbit plush as it sort of guides her through this scene of chaos where <laughs> you've got the card guards on the one side, on the queen's side, fighting mm -hmm. against the chess pieces. And the chess pieces have brought with them um, tentacles. Hey! <laughs> this guy has got him coming out of his <laughs> eye again. I think Adam definitely knows that I really like orifice rape by tentacles. <laughs> That's just, it makes me laugh every time. Sexy. 
So there's a card guard uh, jabbing him in the uh, in his I don't know, his horse um, <laughs> in his knight. And yeah, so Alice um, chasing along the white rabbit, trying to get to the queen's castle. And at some point, she will be stymied in such a way that she she chooses an alternate underground path, which takes her through the dungeon. So um, it's like a set piece area then. Basically, yeah. all you do is run and jump and follow and, while yeah. nonsense is going on around you. Basically, yeah. So um, you <laughs> could fight against, you will fight against things that have been taken over by the Chaos Tentacles um, through this section. But it is a lot of kind of leaping and jumping and like there's a, there's a card <laughs> guard getting taken up by a tentacle. Um, so this is a rough series of sketches from Adam. And myself and Omri have both provided feedback on which of these we like best. And also, you know, sort of how they should be rendered. He's going to pick one of these, uh, and then he's going to render that fully. Hmm, which one? Oh, maybe that could be the question. That's what I was about to say. Don't steal my que that, that's a <laughs> That's a great question. You snooze, you lose. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, here we go. That's the next question uh, we are going to ask. We're going to give away another prize, because it is that time. So, if you chose which of these panels adam should should render in final detail and color um, which would it be it's a here's a you can see it in the little top top of the the jiggers oh yes yeah it's there uh so there's a there's b on the on the there right hand top side where's my cursor there it is that's a that's b that's c and that's d so let us mm. know in the chat and uh yeah I think I'm gravitating towards B. Wait a second. Just seriously, why, why don't girls poop? Says, last night I had the strangest dream. I sailed away to China in a, in a little rowboat to find you, and you said you had to get your laundry cleaned. Didn't want no one to hold you. What does that mean? You said <laughs> nothing. Sounds like a song lyric. It does. Okay, don't know. I don't know what that is. All right, so what are we getting? Uh, we're getting a C and a B and a C and a C and an A or a C. C and B look like they're winning currently. Which one do you like, Martin? B. I'm gravitating towards B. Okay. I like the the angle of them running towards the air quotes camera. Right. Um. So I said. Oh, here you can you can say what it is. Um. You can say what the what the insane children are saying here. B looks like it might be winning out, but it's definitely between B and C. Okay. Um, I got this post over in Monday. Monday is where we we do all of our teamwork stuff. Okay, here it is. So if we scroll down, um, this is where our artists are talking about this scene. You know, there's the story excerpt here. Um, yes, there's <laughs> there is what I think is probably my favorite piece of art that's been generated by this project. I love tentacles, so there you go. <laughs> um, so that was in there as a reference, and then Adam started working on something like this. Um, he's working on the the high res stuff. He's got the castle in the background. He's got the so I think I told him that this was my favorite, the one where of course where the tentacles are coming out of the out of the face right because um, that should be everybody's favorite so he's got them all here uh, presented side by side and then he did the four pick thingy so I told him my my or my favorites in order uh, were B A C D so that's like be, A's being done uh, is that the one here? oh look at that web review look at that a new piece of art with oh. some coloring it's, Feels like kind of a new scene. Omri, everyone's choosing B and C. <laughs> yeah, Omri sometimes doesn't know what people like. Oh, this is Omri did the paint over. He says right. he went with A. Um, but I think that my, my uh, A was in my top two. So Some people are choosing E and F. <laughs> okay. So well, what's, that, that's, what's that's looking pretty good. A little square on the castle. Is it a little castle man? Yeah, because this is the art from the original game, right? right? So he's he's suggesting to make sure that the art looks like something from the original game. 
But I, I like this. I, one of the things I really like about this is that the, the chess pieces are huge, right? They're like massive towering chess pieces compared to the size of Alice. Mm. And it's not all of them are that size. Some of them are more, more normal size. But I mean, like these big chess pieces with tentacles for legs would be really cool. <laughs> That reminds me of an art print I've not seen in a while. Somebody says, Omri is very talented. Don't say that. It'll go to his head. <laughs> you, you, you have to neg Omri all the time. And now I'm thinking about it. I haven't put that art print in the storage folder. I'm going to have to ask Joey about that. Mm -hmm. But you remember, it's kind of like a, a valley. And it's got massive chess pieces on each side. And mm. There's like a rabbit jumping between them, leaving I a trail. That. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely not in that folder. Huh. I need to, need to uh, ask Joey. So it's Ace, which is something that Martin likes to say, says... Ace um, Biscuits. Yeah. Now here's the thing. We've left <laughs> this sitting over here with people that are eligible to win, um, but we never hit roll it. Go on then. All right. It is Raziel. Raziel 317. 317. Look, they even have their own little custom Raziel 317. Ooh. Uh, they must be a professional streamer or something. Professional Raziel. But they're Raziel Oops. number 317. It seems like there are a lot of Raziels in line when they think that name. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, congratulations to Raziel 3-something, three 317? Yeah. Uh, you did win the prize, and the prize we will not announce until <laughs> the end of the stream. I am uh, going to decide that Raziel shall get the... Um... That. So Michael Garvey wants to know, what does its ace mean? This is a phrase that, that Martin uses quite often, so why don't well, you... It's, just, it's good, it's great. Fantastic, it's ace. It's a Britishism. <laughs> it's like using H, you know, at the, at the how, say, how you'd say H. Yes. Yeah. H -D. Uh, or basil instead of basil. Basil, basil yeah. faulty. Okay. Not so basil anyway, faulty. Uh, congratulations to Raziel... 317, you did win. You do need to send an email to support at mysterious.design. Include your name. You, you can not include what you won, but at, uh, because you don't know. You don't know. And then make sure to include name, address, phone number, write all that in a human readable format, such as not to piss us off. And then we will mail out whatever it is you won. Yeah. All right, good. Um, we'll say all that again at the end of the stream, by the way, when we announce what you won. All right. Maybe we won't. You know, that, that image wasn't there this morning when I was starting up um, work on the live stream art. Okay. It's really interesting. It's a good one, though. I like that. The art from some of these scenes is just turning out so fantastic. I, I can't wait to play this. It just keeps getting better. It does. This is, this is all part of the plan. We're going to make... Come on, redacted. We're going to make everything <laughs> look so good that people will not be able to say no to funding and publishing this game. Yeah. All right, so this is a scene from earlier in the game where Alice is fighting her way out of the circus and she begins to discover that all of the, the kind of creatures that she assumed to be just regular old creatures, like say Humpty Dumpty, are in fact illusions and they are on the inside these creatures called manipulators. And the manipulator's goal is mainly to create a, an illusion that keeps Alice trapped in denial. So as she makes her way through all of this, she starts to uncover the fact that everything around her is not real. It's a very action-y pose from Alice there. I like it. It is. She's, she's fighting her way out of, out of denial. Um, yeah. Now, I believe this is from Norm. And I think that Omri is going to step in pretty soon and colorify it. Uh, okay. So it's good. It's a cool one. This, yep. will, this will probably end up being a poster. Probably, yeah. although we are all posted up for the first half of the year now. Yes. Uh, Michael Garvey says, who creates the, mani mani blah, 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 blah. Who creates the <laughs> manipulators? Um, the answer to that is that they are a product of Hatter Industries. So, mm. you know, Hatter's kind of like the Tony Stark of, of Wonderland. And he does have this massive, crazy workshop and industrial zone. If you played Alice Magic Returns, you would have run through a lot of that and seen kind of his machinery smelting kind of kind of stuff so he makes this these creatures but um there is a point where he says to alice that he no longer controls them and we uh, we aren't necessarily sure of who does control them at that moment or we may be i think he might announce that oh the, i handed them over to the queen but the queen has vanished and dar, dar, dar. so 
We'll see. Magna Gamer says, wait, is this a spoiler? I don't know. Did we not do a spoiler alert? I don't, I don't think so. Um, so the manipulators are there to keep child Alice happy, question mark, says Alpha 1412. Well, they're products of an attempt to keep her in denial. So one of the things that when you're suffering from any sort of PTSD, depression, addiction, or anything sort of unhealthy, you'll find that there are people around you that like you when you're unhealthy, um, or they like you in depression, or they like you addicted. Now, they may be co-conspirators in your addiction. So like if you have a drinking buddy or a lot of drinking buddies, and you go and tell them, hey, I've given up drinking, they'll say, boo, no, don't <laughs> give up drinking. Um, and if you have a friend who, for instance, feeds off the fact that you're the depressed and sad one in the relationship, and then you say to them, I'm giving up this, this, and this, or I'm working on myself, or I'm trying to get better, they too will maybe overtly or maybe secretly wish that you would stay sick because it makes them feel better about themselves or it allows them some degree of control over you. Um, but there are a lot of reasons why when you're sick and when you need to get better, um, you will find that there are people around you who, who actually root for you not getting better. Um, so these manipulators and what she's experiencing in the, 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 the realm of denial in the circus, it's all meant to mirror this notion that you, either people who you believe are your, to be your friends or elements of your own psychology will fight against the idea that you get better or that you move on to a better position in life. So that's, that's why these are in the game, um, and that's what they represent. Dai Dreads Dragoon is being gifting tears. Don't know what that is, but thanks. We really don't know that anything about Twitch. That person is gifting a tear. I have no idea what that is. But it uh, seems to be generous. Yeah. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Some uh, of these manipulators have got syringes. That's kind of creepy. What's in them? Margaritas. Ooh. Yeah. I think if you look <laughs> at the, uh, the drawings of them, they all have like kind of a greenish, yellowish liquid inside. It's margaritas. Greenish, yellowish. Yes. Uh, seriously, why don't girls poop asks, will you ever play Bad Day LA? I don't think so, because we now live in an era where if I did that, I would get super canceled. It's, it's no longer satire. <laughs> no. So no. <laughs> yeah. Not going to play that game on a live stream. People have no sense of humor anymore, so I'm not, not touching that. <laughs> um, okay, here we're getting into some new sketches. I believe these are also... Adam, or they might have been Dario. I think this is Dario. Um, I posted about this on Instagram before we went live today because um, this is another section we're working through for art. Um, it's described in the narrative document, and this is from the Veil of Tears. And as you can see in these, um, there are tears uh, coming down out of the sky. So he's doing the same thing. He's presenting sort of four different variations on what this scene might, might look like. Now, the way it's described in the narrative overview is that she arrives in the Veil of Tears. Maybe that's supposed to be representative. <laughs> that, that could be Alice. I think that's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Look at, got the cloak <laughs> on and everything. Uh, anyway, oh, no, no, no ponytail though, so maybe not. Um, so yeah, anyway, there, uh, who's that? Somebody. That could be anything. Squiggle Man. <laughs> yeah, we've got Squiggle Man. I guess that's what these represent. Wiggly anyway, turd man. <laughs> turdy wiggle man. Um, so anyway, Alice arrives here and what she's going to find is that time is in effect frozen throughout this whole section of the game, except that she carries with her a, a kind of a, a radiance and influence that unfreezes um, things around her. And that as she moves through the scene, the creatures in the scene around her, the wildlife of this zone, are woke back up, at least temporarily, until she passes and they kind of refreeze. Um, and it opens up a lot of interesting possibilities for like using the big raindrops as a, a mechanic of platforming, jumping, um, exploration throughout the throughout this part of the world. So as she comes close to one of these, they'll start to kind of reliquify, but you'll still have time to jump into them and jump. <coughs> 
jump out. Do you have, <laughs> are you trying to give me coronavirus? Yep, choking to death. Oh, man. We just have some tasty water. Mm. So anyway, um, that is all inspired by... Where is it? There. There it is. So this is the original piece of artwork that was done years and years ago. I think this might have been Ken Wong that did this. <clears throat> and this is this was meant to be a section in the Veil of Tears. Um, but these tears, I think, were kind of more alive. They were more action-y. Um, anyway, I always really, really loved this concept. And it didn't make it into Alice Madness Returns. Uh, we are going to adapt this to the thing I just said, which is there will be a section where you run through the Veil of Tears. It's a, it's a part of Wonderland Woods. And then there will be um, these kind of tears just hanging in the air throughout the whole area. And then Alice will go to meet with the Duchess, and then she's going to recover tears to try to heal. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that's contained in this. Um, why the frozen tears? Because in Depression, which is what that section of the game is meant to, to represent, time seems to stand still like your days drag by very very slowly and you just kind of you know you feel this constant sense of either deep pain or um, numbness because your your body is basically trying to protect itself by making you feel emotionally numb now um the, the tears part and the idea that the duchess tells alice to go and collect tears from that very famous crying alice statue is that it is shown that by crying you do actually help to reset your hormones and your chemical balance and your psychological state because crying does a lot more than just make your face wet it also uh has a has a, a psychological effect right um what's going on here oh we've got some concern from people bless you martin are you okay martin yeah it's got a little tickle in my throat it's because you drank water, which you never do. He doesn't know how to drink water, so he chokes yeah, on my, it. My body doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so now that you've started to drink water, you're going to have to practice a bit more. Maybe. Yeah. Um, right. I think. Any more comments here? Uh, Looking Glass says the Veil of Tears remains one of their favorite settings, but wishes there was more interaction with the environment. But we will a have a setting. lot more in interaction in that, that zone. Um, and again, if you don't mind spoilers, you can go over and read the narrative outline mm -hmm. document um, and you'll see that. Time only moves when Alice does, like super hot. Kind of, but not really. <laughs> I imagine more like she's bringing this little ray of sunshine in and then anywhere that her sunshine touches, it kind of comes back to life momentarily. But then, um, yeah, as she continues to move, they it goes back to being frozen. And Nicholas Braca is saying, did you read my ideas about chaos convergence? Not yet, but it is still sitting in my Google <clears> inbox <throat> as a Patreon comment uh, reminder. But I'm, a, I'm kind of behind on a couple of things We're these very days. very busy so these days. Yeah, very busy, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I will get there, don't worry. <laughs> Why don't girls poop, says Martin is contagious. Leave Martin alone. Stop picking on him. <clears throat> It's not me. I caught it off Lucky. It was mm. coughing near me this morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. We're all caught up on those comments. Woo! And we can now go on to the next Ooh, That's good. Imagery. Michael Garvey. What if it's drab colors and everywhere Alice goes makes it more colorful? Yeah, I think Hello. it's something like that. Like Grimm in yeah, reverse. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I did <laughs> do that game once before. It was called Grimm. Um... <laughs> I just thought this was funny. Just see, ah! <laughs> seeing the egg overrun or burst out with his <laughs> own kind of chest burster. Yeah. Um, this is from that same scene. So this is the background element that Omri, I think, did for the setting of the battle or something. And so a lot of this is sort of floating pl platformy stuff. And then we're going to put Alice in here, and then we're going to put the enemies she's fighting against in the environment here. So expect to see a, another variation on this image coming up soon where all the action has been filled in. All right. Hey, what's that? What is that? Uh, so this is our promo for today for our friends <clears throat> over at Freaky Fandoms, except they, they wrote to say don't promo Freaky Fandoms. Um, instead, this is uh, Deborah and uh, Andrew saying that they have they're big fans of this person called simon boswell who is a composer in the united states and uh that they wanted us to use the power of their promotion 
<laughs> to to make everyone aware of simonboswell.com. All right. And he has done music for games such as, sorry, movies such as Hardware, Santa Sagre, Stage Fright, and Demons 2. You seen any of those? I have not. I uh, may have seen Demons 2. Hmm. <laughs> now, he did music also for Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions, I have seen. Hackers, mm. I have seen. Shallow Grave, I have seen. The Just... Shallow Grave? Huh? Shallow Grave? The UK indie movie? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Uh, Dust Devil, I've not seen. And Phenomena, I have. So, um, anyway, the, um, the idea is that we... <clears throat> See, it does say there. They expected us to change out the Freaky Fandoms logo for the... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's all right. Um, so, yeah, they would like everyone watching the stream or the later upload to YouTube to go check out Simon's music and website, and that hopefully that will help their outreach and sales. Excellent. There you, there you go. So, yeah, everybody... Go to simonboswell.com, or we'll get Lulu to bite your face. There you go. Don't want your face bit. <clears throat> uh, that's it. I think we've gone through the whole art, whatever folder. It is a small folder, this stream. We've got a small folder. So why don't we now go over to question and answer time. Oh, well, wait a second. I think we said we were going to do something about the latest. Well, you are, because you're going to talk about the latest Patreon post, which contains... Uh, what's the thing I want to say? All of the comments about the, the narrative stuff. Or some of the comments it's about the narrative. It's a very big post, though. But let's... It's a lot of comments. Yeah. Little... Eh. Um, so this is the point where I'm going to say <clears throat> stop watching if you don't want spoilers. Or poke out your ears, or whatever it is you do. Oh, I'm going to have a stretch before we start. Mm. Uh, don't you guys have another uh, top tier subscriber page something? She never promos anything. Is that true? Who what? Somebody is saying, why don't girls poop says you have another top tier subscriber called Paige. She never pro promos anything. Sent an email to her twice asking, you know, do you want to shout out or anything? Yep. No reply. I could try again, we, I guess. We have a similar thing where there's somebody who is our best and biggest mysterious customer. And almost like, I think basically anything and everything we've ever put into the Mysterious shop, they have bought at least one of. And sometimes they buy more than one of things. Um, and I've reached out to him via email a couple times to say like, hey, I just want to thank you. And hey, I want to give you a personalized discount code. And a person never responds and they never use the codes. So <laughs> I don't know. Mysterious. Mm, well, yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, some... Why don't girls poop says even that expensive suit? No, this person has not gone that far. <laughs> That's a good question. Where though. is that suit? Could you could you find it now if you had to? Yeah, it's in grandma's bedroom in a, a stand-up closet in there. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, now what we're going to be talking about now um, will contain spoilers, so please poke out your ears if you don't want to hear about it. We kind of talked about it before. What if I don't want to hear about it? How can I avoid spoilers? Get out. Or hold still, I'll poke out your ears. Get out of the kitchen. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, let's hear some comments. Uh, if you can, uh, pick the interesting ones. <laughs> but, it, but I think a lot of the comments right now, they're going to be related to this post over on Patreon. It says here, stop reading now if you want to avoid spoilers. It actually says it three times. Um, so, yeah, spoilers are on the way. Although I did kind of spoil a bit of it earlier when we were playing Madness Oh, Are we going to actually do another prize first? Sure. Should have done that during the uh, SimonBoswell.com thing, really. I don't know. Okay, mm. uh, here we go. We're going to do a prize instead. Do we need a question? Yep, come up with an excellent question, like how you stole mine last time. Okay, I did see a question earlier. You're going to steal I, someone, else's, steal someone else's, else's question. You're just a question thief today. Yeah, and it had nothing to do with anything. But the question was, do you believe in ghosts? Or do ghosts believe in you? But maybe the first part. Do you? Look, when you ask the question, it's incredibly stupid. I'm sure whoever... No, that's asked, what they said. I know, but they're fine. In they're, that voice. I can't say that our fans in any way are stupid, so... Okay, so, do I believe in ghosts? No. Do ghosts believe in me? <laughs> no. 
What I also you? do not believe in ghosts. However, it would be ace if you know it was proved. I would, I would think that was pretty cool. This is the reason why I don't believe is because we now live in an era where everything is on camera all the time, and there are people recording with phones <laughs> and God knows what all the time. And at some point, you would just catch a ghost or a UFO or something on film. I mean, there are people that you know. How many people now have? Um, ring security doorbells and Amazon Echoes and all these kinds of things in their houses that are constantly recording and uh oh uh, uh oh that doesn't look good it says we have a recording error no space left on device well, there you go we there somehow you go. ran out of space okay so that was <laughs> that was the end of the YouTube live stream <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have seen some fairly convincing UFO videos but I'm subscribed to a couple of like creepy YouTube channels, you know, top five ghosts caught on camera. Right. And I'm, I'm thinking of unsubscribing now. It's just all nonsense. You just, I haven't seen a single thing that makes me think, I can't explain that. No, no, no. no. It's... So... It's, and they always do it like, you know, there's, I think it's Nuke's top five. And he started doing like, you know, meanwhile on TikTok. Yeah. Why would you believe anything yeah, on TikTok? Yeah, it's exactly. just clicks and views that the, these so, people want. Brisa says, I still think aliens exist somewhere in the universe. I believe that they do. I just don't think they'll ever be able to reach us. Like if you look at the nature of the universe, you'll, you'll see that not only are we moving through space and time, but everything is getting further and further apart all the time. So unless somebody does develop some sort of like warp speed, jump, jump, uh, whatever jump drive no no it's not gonna happen <laughs> trump drive <laughs> Shh, that's canceled don't even say that word uh, uh Dreads so... dragon says american mcgee you need some new ssds well it's a funny thing today or maybe tomorrow uh there is a nas network storage device showing up and i think i because i'm not putting it together my friend is putting it together for me but i think it's got like 10 or 16 terabytes in it. It's it's pretty bonkers. It's a lot of um, YouTube video storage. <laughs> we're running out of space all over the place here because we don't have a central server for keeping all the videos that we record and all the art that's being created and stuff like that. So yes, there is more space on the way. But he's going to use his fancy tech knowledge to sort of network up the new house. No, he didn't do that. I did that. I mean, setting up like the NAS and getting every like PC from every location to communicate to the right thing. Is he helping with that? No, um, he's just helping to make sure the NAS gets put together the right way. As far as everything else, I'm doing most of that on my own. So anyway, I just want to add one more comment to the question about do you believe in ghosts? When I was a child, I lived directly across the street from a graveyard and next door to the graveyard was an asylum, like a, a mental mental asylum hospital. So. Um, for that reason, I don't believe in ghosts because I used to just do everything in that graveyard. Um, it's it's was like where I would go fishing and I'd ride my bike around with my friends. And so I just never had a fear of graveyards or dead people. Um, and then because of the insane asylum across the street, I did believe in crazy people because <laughs> they would they would often escape and you'd see them running down the road in front of my house <laughs> in straight jacket, like white, you know, things. And we were told because we lived across the street to always keep our doors locked and never let a crazy person in. So, Never let someone in wearing a white jacket. Basically, yeah. With their arms at their sides. Exactly. Hi, can I just come in? Yeah. Could you, you cut me free of this straight jacket? <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll it. Roll it. It's Dronath. Dronath. Dronath is the winner of this go-round of giveaway. So. Um, they can win this. All right, so uh, Dronath, you need to send an email to support at mysterious.design. And in that, say ghosts don't exist, and also share your <laughs> name, your phone number, and your mailing address, um, and be sure to all do all that in a, a human readable format that doesn't make us into a sane asylum patients. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And good night. Yes. Here we go. Uh, back to the cursor has disappeared. Web review. So the thing we're about to talk about right now is spoilers. Our spoilers. Spoilers. Spoilers ahead. Poke out your ears. Um, so what we're talking about here is that I was looking for a way in which to anchor and relay the backstory elements that are necessary for someone who maybe hasn't played in any of the other Alice games and or 
has played it but kind of forgotten many elements so there's a lot of exposition contained in this about like the night of the fire and alice escaping her family dying and alice going to the hospital and then to the asylum so some of these memories are meant to refresh our understanding of the story but it's also bringing child alice up to speed because a lot of the memories she's recovering are future events of her host entity which is adult alice this is one of the i mean for me this is one of the most complicated stories i've ever written it's one of the reasons it's getting written so slowly because when i sit down to try to tackle the interconnected stories that are taking place um and the the cross time cross psyche stuff um there's a lot of stuff to get tripped up on so i i spend a lot of time just sort of meditating on where and how to fix all these interconnected problems and anyway, um, you know, what I did was set down the goals and motivations of the various characters that we encounter. So, you know, one of them is an element of, her, of adult Alice's psyche, that's her inner child. One of them is another element of her psyche, which is shadow Alice. Um, one of them is the current day who, who adult Alice is and, and so forth and so on. And what are they representative of? So this... I think one of the things I saw, people were kind of concerned, like, oh, this makes the story really focus on adult Alice. It's specifically not designed to do that, but it is meant to find a way to connect the adult and the child. And at the end, to have there be something that the child can do, as in she recovers a memory of things that the adult <clears throat> has forgotten, such that the child can be integral to the saving of herself by saving her adult self, right? So the child is still the primary character that we follow, follow through these stories. And she has a very primal goal. That is, she wants to return home. But at some point, she's going to have to discover, in essence, that she's already home because she resides within the adult. And that there's no way for her to like go back to a physical home, not only the, the place burned down, but she's, she's a, a piece of a psyche. She's not an individual. So there is no going home for her but by reconnecting with the adult she can be reintegrated and she can be found again and she could be a function functional um, part of alice's uh, holistic uh, psyche so that's why this is being done this work of laying out the story for a character that's involved in the story will be done across all of the instances of, of the various elements of alice's psyche and the work the, the laying out of this stuff must be done and each of the characters that we lay out narrative for they need to have strong clear motivations that are aligned with who and what they are and they need to have a proper timeline that we can follow as they go from beginning to middle to end of their story that's what we're talking about that's why this is getting written all right um anything going on here we hope cheshire cat is a big part of the game yeah he, him in amr he pops up um once Alice's rabbit companion is taken out of the story. All right. Well, let's pluck some of these out then. Let's start with Lucky Dragon. All right. Why not? Although I do think that the initial one is missing from Lucky Dragon, but we'll start here. The stuff you just mentioned, I'm assuming. This, this is a very intriguing idea. It's a major retcon, but would track with his character, I think. So this is the Radcliffe chats. Yeah. Radcliffe has the means and opportunity, but now we would need the motivation before I get 100% behind this. I uh, feel like if I'm not doing my job, if I don't bring up the... <laughs> <My> <laughs> I don't bring up the fact that Radcliffe has narration in Madness Returns, and he suggests he still kind of believes Alice might have been responsible for the fire, but doesn't at all indicate that this was something he came up with to pin blame on her. He very much speaks as someone who did not know, but was using Alice as an opportunity to skim some money off the top. No sense is given from his own words to himself that he was in on it with Bumby. I think we can get around this, though, if it is presented right. Yeah, so I, I actually replied to this comment um, did. a couple times back and forth with Lucky Dragon, and I think that the main thing to focus on here is that I think the way that we read these characters is oftentimes individual to us. Um, for example, the message that, like to use aliens again, like Ridley Scott 
says that the Alien movies, the early ones, were actually about, like, aliens, um, was meant to be a an exploration of motherhood and of moms. And if you told me that that was his idea from the beginning, uh, but I only found out about that, like, a few years after I'd seen the first movie, which which was the instance, or that was kind of the case with me, I would scratch my head a bit. I'd be like, yeah, I can kind of see that. But clearly that was really important to him, and it meant something to him. So... Um, what I'm trying to say is what we as viewers take away from as an understanding for what's going on in a film oftentimes is a bit disconnected or different from what was trying to be told by the authors or the directors or writers in the first place. Um, so what I guess what I'm trying to say is we can we can all have different interpretations of about what a story or a character was about. Um, and it may feel like retconning later on. I don't feel like it is because as I replied to Lucky Dragon later on is that Madness Returns was a murder mystery. And all of the characters that we encountered, from Pris Whitless to Nan to Radcliffe, they were all painted in such a way as to have suspicion cast upon them as people who had something to do with the fire, the death of the parents, and so forth. We left it open. Um, and as an example, like there's an opening in the fact that when you go to Radcliffe's house and Alice is trying to find, his, find the rabbit and confront him, it's a three-story building but she only ever has access to floors <clears throat> one and two. That leaves the third floor open to contain a, a MacGuffin. A, it's, a, it's a mystery box, right? Um, so there's little elements about him like that that I like that makes it feel like, ah, there's still a bit of mystery about who he is and what he is and what his relation to this story is. Okay. Well, you can all see it on the screen there. Lucky Dragon goes on. Say, why would he be perpetuating a lie in his own private thoughts? That's where it becomes a retcon. Well, because people lie to themselves, and the most convincing liars are the ones that have convinced themselves of their own innocence. So I don't think it's unusual to suggest that he could be thinking to himself that he's not guilty, or that he has not done anything related to what's happened here. Now, I think it was Lucky Dragon who later went on to write a bit about setting it up so that there is um, there is a concern that he has been skimming from the family's fortune, and that now that Bumby's dead, there could be a proper investigation or audit related to um, where the money's going, and they may then discover that that this lawyer has been siphoning money away. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a connection between Ratcliffe and Bumby. Um, it could just be that he's got his own motivation now that Bumby's dead to further contain her um, and that that could lead to the, the kind of conflict going on between the two of them. Um, and it might just be enough. And, and again, I, I view his motivation is pretty clear. It's greed. Mm -hmm. um, and so having Alice contained, I mean, we're going to go back to Shawshank Redemption here. We, we've talked about that film a couple times during these streams and in relation to the story we're telling. Because Alice's story is, and it's been used before in the titles on our presentations and stuff, it is an escape from the prison of your own mind. And Shawshank Redemption is a prison escape story. Now, the Andy Dufresne character ends up running into a warden who uses him... To, to hide what he's doing to siphon money away from the prison. And that is what his ultimate takedown or stumbling block or whatever becomes is that Andy Dufresne then has the evidence related to what he's been doing as a crime and it's greed. Um, but he then uses that to turn the tables on the warden and at the end of the movie or the, you know, you know the warden shoots himself in the face or something and commits suicide. So um, there's a cut. To me, there's a kind of connection there, and I think that if the person who's siphoning money is then afraid of being found out such that they won't allow you to be, in, um, and that was the Dufresne story, right? He was accused of having murdered his wife, and then evidence comes out that he didn't. He should be released, but at this point, he's so useful to have incarcerated that the warden makes it so he can't get out, right? Traps mm -hmm. him. Um, so it's kind of, you know, there's elements in there that are somewhat similar, so something to think about. Yeah, I just wanted Renifer asks if any of the voice actors from the previous Alice games will be part of Asylum. Yes, we get that. We get that we get a lot. question almost every stream. <laughs> we had uh, uh, was uh, Roger was on. Yes, that was a good one. 
Uh, so yeah, yes, okay. very very likely. Right. Um. But yeah, if you're interested about the character motivation stuff that I discussed earlier in this stream, um, I did copy it and paste it into these these comment responses over on Patreon. Um, it starts here, and it it goes through Young Alice, Shadow Alice, Queen of Hearts, Adult Alice, um, and then what it is that the motivations are and what the potential outcomes are, and so yeah, that was there. Okay, what else we got then? Uh, Raven Van Kresk. Uh, what do you mean by uncertain lines? I yeah, I saw where, that I don't one. know where that was. Well, because I, in describing how we would present these scenes on screen in the game, um, first of all, I wanted to get away from just non-interactive sort of cinematic or non-interactive art scenes that are that are being watched passively as this narration is taking place about what's going on. And I want to make it where she's kind of exploring inside of a kind of a hollow deck type of thing, you know. Um, okay, now going back to aliens. Um, you remember in uh, Prometheus, then they found that the big space whatever guys, um, that the, the zone where they were doing their weapons development had these cameras that would play back conveniently. Mm -hmm. Again, that's all about telling the backstory of the place where they are. And it's a dumb idea because it's like, who makes these dumb hollow recordings? <laughs> and why is it that when they're magically triggered by these guys breaking into the weapons base, um, they play back exactly what needs to be played in order for you to know this, what went wrong? And also, it's like a very convenient thing. Anyway, magic exposition cameras. <laughs> but the thing about those scenes is that the recordings themselves were projected in 3D back into the space where the events took place. And the people watching, um, they couldn't interact with any of it, right? It was all kind of hologrammy stuff. I guess I'm, I was just trying to suggest that whatever she's interacting with, the scenes she's walking through, they're not solid. They're not physical. And that's why I said something like wavy lines or whatever. I was trying to kind of describe an art style that would help to support the idea that she was within a memory instead of within the actual place because that, that could be a little bit confusing but um i took the point i mean like i don't i wouldn't suggest that we've exactly defined the art style for these scenes just yet i imagine that's something we'll do a bit a little bit later down the line in fact the reason i posted that stuff was mainly to get feedback on the general concept of presenting the memories in this fashion and the content of the memories um, and we generated a ton of comments a ton of comments about that so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of, I was just doing a shorthand of like, what, what would be clearly a memory, not the real thing? If everyone in the scene was going, ooh. Well, I don't, I don't, I didn't, it, right, right now it's just me sketching, right? I mean, it's just the same as our artists do. They sketch stuff and then we see it and we're like, hey, don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's it. I, I just wanted okay. it to feel abstract so that it wasn't confused with real life or wonderland it had its own space and time feeling about it so it was clearly not of the other places yeah, yeah. all right moving on michael garvey you've got it right there on the screen yes i see you have a very fleshed out part of this narrative in these instances it seems to me you're on the right track because your confidence in your writing is growing mm. Uh, anytime an idea flows that easily it means you are sold on the idea i like it also the non-combat in these areas are a great just uh, juxtaposition to the action uh, i can see as we go through the stages of grief we will also go through these stages of revelation the player should get a prize or reward after each part to mark the event that way they can have a visual or tangible reminder of that part yeah makes sense uh, doesn't PlayStation trophy or Xbox achievement for sure. watching a memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there, there will be some sort of a marker of progress being made, for sure. Did you just mess up that poster? No. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I see a couple of other comments from Michael Garvey here um, on screen and uh, just simply talking about the appreciation of the snow globe stuff, so... Uh, What's that? The that we were going to make them maybe or is a different thing no it's just asking like what and why of these things um 
a snow globe in the game. Yeah. Right. And uh, mainly it goes back to the idea of encapsulating Wonderland within a space that is not connected to the real Wonderland, right? So she's in a jail, prison, basically. And then why a snow globe is it makes sense as a kind of prison or a jail. But I also like the fact that that's not me farting. It's just, it's just it's the chair. You've of got course. A, you have a cloth skin chair. I've got like this faux leather thing. So I don't you you don't fart when you move around, but I do. You hear that? Yeah. Um, anyway, the other thing I like about the snow globe motif is that when we began the first game and when she returns to her family home, it's at a time where it is snowing outside, and so it's good kind of connection back to the the history of her story. Why? Yeah. Uh, it says, will I be closer or further from <laughs> Martin? <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> no, just going through. Um, here's one from Sala. Did he say anything mental? Let's have a look. He likes to say mental things. The insane children look great. Question. Are you not concerned that someone might spoil the story for this game somewhere else? Not everyone can keep a secret. The Last of Us 2 was a good example of that. I don't think it matters, and I don't think in this day and age it works very well to try to keep these secrets. Also, I believe the drama around The Last of Us 2 was paid for manufactured <laughs> drama. I don't think that it would have made as much supposed drama if somebody wasn't engineering it to do that. And the reason you do that is because manufactured drama, fake news, um, breaks through <laughs> breaks through the, the noise. Um, and so I think we see that quite often that like a supposed, you know, ist enemy, um, it could be racist or sexist or whatever ist, um, comes forth and says something about something is crap and then the, the manufactured outrage based around that brings all the news to the to the yard um so i think that's all it is i think i think a lot of times um there's much worse stuff actually going on in the world that gets zero coverage meanwhile nonsensical stuff like ooh, fake outrage about somebody having outrage <laughs> about a game it's like headlines for days and days. They couldn't get better press prior to release of that game. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's made up. And, and anyway, if we get a bit of press somehow and it makes press because somebody uncovers some element that they think is bad or something, um, then okay, so be it, you know. Mm. Anyway. Seems that Aeolus in Windron doesn't like The Last of Us 2. Says it was the best joke of the Game Awards. Mm. It won a bunch of stuff, I assume they mean. I agree. It's a great game. Yeah. Regardless think, of I, the story, the I game think, is fantastic. And I think, you know, games can be good games and use outrage drama marketing. Um, oh. So, um, Nicholas Brokaw says, hey, this is pretty darn good. I personally prefer that Radcliffe did not know about Bumby's involvement in the fire. I would find it hard to believe that Radcliffe would be okay with the killing of the little family, regardless of money. Yeah, I, I read that comment, and I, I feel like that's a sensible thing to say, um, to suggest that he had known of the, the intention for burning down the house and things like that. Um, there might be a better way to spin it, where he was also shocked by the fact that the house burned down, but he was also very concerned about keeping his cover. So when it was suggested that Alice be institutionalized. He went along with it because that meant she couldn't start an investigation as to what was going on with the estate. That's why if once she's out of Bumby's care and, and he knows maybe at that point that Bumby's working to destroy her memories, he wants to leave her alone, whatever. Um, once that's happened and Bumby's killed, he would then freak out because it's like, oh man, you know, the guy that was shielding me from investigation is dead. Next thing you know, they're going to be coming for the estate, and then they're going to figure out all the all the money that I s stole. So there's something I think there's something in that that thought. We'll still okay. work on that. 
Uh, well, that's the end of my stuff on that particular post. I mean, I had to cut a bunch of stuff out, otherwise we would have printed like an entire tree's worth of paper. Yeah, it's it's, it's a lot. But as you can it's... see, there's a, there's a lot of other stuff in there you can go and read if and you I, so I, desire. I want to make clear, this is exactly the kind of back and forth I love when we're doing crowd design. I know that Lucky Dragon at one point had said like, oh, nobody comments except me. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me like look like I write a lot. Look, I love when when everyone uh, on from the insane children are writing and sharing ideas. There's a lot of really good ideas contained in your comments over on on um, Patreon, and I, I hope everybody feels like I'm playing along in my role as um, this in in this crowd design uh, in a way that is engaging and useful and makes you all feel like you're providing um, good feedback. Uh, to be clear, like you know, Lucky Dragon and Greg. Um, Michael and Garvey and, and everyone else that's engaging with this, you, all of you are coming up with really fantastic ideas. And I'm really happy with the way that it's helping to guide my thinking on how to build this story. Like I said, this is a really difficult story for me to write. And it's mainly because of the, it's the technical issue of it. It's to try to create an encapsulation of a character's journey across multiple facets of their their past present um you know psyche inner child adult shadow self all this it's not easy <laughs> so um i'm glad to have everybody on board for this it's really good okay um anything going on here uh, just a bit more talk about radcliffe radcliffe is a socially conservative middle-aged lawyer almost a stereotype for risk aversion well, yes, I could accept that a little bit, but I don't... Do you remember what he was dressed up like as in, in Madness <laughs> Returns? I mean, he looked quite strange, right? So um, I think... Uh, let me see here. Because he comes out in, like, a frickin' robe um, and with like, with, like, Asian slippers on. I don't... Yeah... <laughs> This is how we saw him in the game. I don't looks, looks cozy. He's ready for bed. Well, the point in my bringing this up is, I feel like he's he's got a bit of a weirdness, adventurous, not typical um, kind of. There's something about him that's a little weird. Like if you saw me get on this live stream wearing like <laughs> funny Asian gown and. Um, I think you'd think like mm, this. This this guy's a little weird. His the rabbit's right there on his desk, by the way. Mm. So I don't, you know, she was accusing him, um, but apparently the rabbit was there in the scene. So I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd think that he was very conservative. To be honest with you, I, I think that there's something off about him. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, I think we're good now. We need to do one more. Um, giveaway okay right we do okay um you have a question yeah i'm a little freaked out by the whole thing of like you have my rabbit where's my rabbit and he does seem to have it like right there on his desk are we getting i think we're getting to that section of the game in madness returns next is that right the chat no do we see him soon <laughs> i don't know it won't be soon but next okay. maybe <laughs> Right, right. All right. Uh, yeah, Truth Decay says Radcliffe has been hitting the opium. I think that's probably right. I think I think that might be where the money's going to is actually to pay for like his opium habit or something. Um, though I thought opium people were slim. Or <laughs> he may maybe he's be, not been on it for long. Or maybe he's spending all the money on donuts. What's that? I don't know. What new thing happened? It was some sort of video something. I don't know. Not sure. I saw the pop up, but I don't know what that is. Okay, uh, that's it for art review, comment review, and all the other fun stuff. So, why don't we move on to last prize giveaway? Okay. What What's the question, Martin? Come up with one of your own damn questions and stop stealing other people's own questions. Damn question. Um. Don't know. What we've what we've been talking about, Radcliffe lawyers, opium. What what's your favorite illegal drug? No, um, I'll think of anything. 
Except for asking people what kind of drugs they like. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's not a great question. Um, anyway, here we go. I'm going to come up with the question. Uh, it is, uh, do you know, we, <laughs> we won't come back to live stream until after Chinese New Year. No. Uh, what Chinese animal are you? That's what I'd like to know. So we are heading Ooh. into the year of the ox. And I don't know if you know this, but when you talk about these various animals, they have, for each of them, there's 12 animals in total, and then there are four elements connected to the animals themselves. That means that you have to go for 12 years to come back around. So you've got earth and water and metal and I think fire. Um, so those are the four elements. And then the animals themselves are things like rabbit and monkey and I'm a rat. Um, dragon. Surely you're a dragon. No. No, what are you? Tiger. That's so like your personality, too. You're, just, you're adventurous, you're wild, you chase down and consume your own prey. Yep. You eat, exclusively just, eat meat. That's me all over. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I am a rat, so that means that the year of 2020 was terrible because it was the year of the rat and i'm a rat and the way it goes is that if whatever the year that's coming if that's your year um so we're going into the the ox the, the whatever the water buffalo the cow I don't, whatever you want to call it <laughs> um when it is your own year so if you're an ox or a water buffalo or a cow or whatever um that's supposed to be a bad year for you and you are supposed to wear red underwear underwear for that entire year I guess to protect your crotch from ghosts or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> ghosts do traditionally just go straight for the crotch. <laughs> sure. You, won't, you can't see them down there. Unless, maybe, unless you're one of those cam girls, I guess. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, there you go. So we're, we're going into... So, basically, you don't just say, I'm tiger, I'm snake, I'm whatever. It's like the year, So because I, I'm metal snake. Correct. So I'm, this year I'm is fire going, ox. Yeah, what kind of tiger are you? Probably water tiger. Uh, let's see here. Um, what was your birth year? Seventy four. You're trying to say that like like you don't want people to hear it. Yeah, it's a secret. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you were going to be. So I'm a water rat, which makes sense because I like water, and um, I like things out on the water and all kinds of things like that. So you're a wood tiger. You're a tiger. Tiger Woods. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Me and Tiger go. Woods, got a lot in common. All right. We like the ladies. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. So you're actually, I think a lot of people wouldn't know this by looking at us, but you're actually two years younger than me. Or one year younger than me. Two. Two, sorry, I can't math. You can tell, it's because I'm so youthful. Yeah, sure. All righty, uh, that's it. So, uh, we're going to roll it. Three, two, one. Renifer. Ooh, Renifer. I feel like Renifer won again recently. We just um, talked about Renifer earlier. No. Oh. Yeah, we have Michael Garvey is the same birth year as you. Funny. Um, looking, Excellent. Looking Glass is a taiga. No Somebody R. said it as well. Alberto Who was it? Alberto Flores says dragon. That's crazy that there are people out there that are born in 2000. That person is now 21 years old. <laughs> and, but it feels like that's not possible. Yeah. Um, Love Dragon says 1992. That's not an animal. <laughs> but that is a very Chinese way of answering how old are you. Hmm. You say to a Chinese person, oh, how old are you for whatever reason? And then they'll say, and they'll a, say year. a year. Yeah. So I didn't ask to do maths. Just yeah. tell me how old you are. <laughs> That's why Chinese people are so good at maths. It they, is. They, they force themselves to do it all the time. So there you go. So yeah, uh, it's a quirk of China. Scary 151 is a metal cock. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, so G <laughs> Rinifer, who hasn't actually responded to winning. Yeah. Um, Rinifer, you need to send an email to support at mysterious dot sign. Yes and include your name and your Chinese zodiac animal <laughs> and your phone number and your address and also what prize you won, which actually I think you can now tell everybody what prizes they I, won. I think maybe we don't. No, do it, come oh, on. Go on um, and do that, oh, all of you need to do that within 24 hours and as always do it in a 
human readable format that doesn't turn us into fire snakes or something. Okay, they went. Apparently, then, Scary151 uh, is gonna get that. That is the defend art from Out of the yeah. Woods. Droganath. You're doing a terrible job of holding getting the that. camera. Uh, Raziel317 is going to get the design doc. That is the design Madden. brief for Alice Madness Returns, yeah. and it's signed. And Renifer, if they ever answer, will get the glass skulls. I feel like Renifer's not going to answer, and I won't be able to get that garbage out of my basement. If they don't answer, just yeet it over yeah. a fence. And it'll probably hit somebody in the head, a glass snake. <laughs> oh, now Renifer is saying, OMG! There yes, we Renover, you're slow on the draw there. Okay, <laughs> uh, so that's it for today's live stream. It was off to a broken start, and then it stopped recording for YouTube like a half hour ago, but whatever. Yeah, but people aren't going to see my awesome intro that I did now that we had to start again. And they won't see the long spiel about internet censorship that I did only for the YouTube audience. Seriously, we, we chatted for like... How long? 15 minutes? Yeah. Before just deciding to knock it on the head and start again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, there are some things you can do if you want to support the crap that we do over here. Uh, it's over on my blog. It's AmericanMcGee.com, and it includes signing up for the Alice 3 mailing list. I think it's now got like 50,000 signatures. Ooh, just um, need 10 times that. Yes, we only need 5 million for, for <laughs> EA or anyone else to notice. Um, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, which I don't use anymore, Instagram, which I do, Twitch, which we're on right now, Twitter, which I don't use anymore, <laughs> and YouTube, which we only upload videos to because it's broken. Anyway, you can follow me on those, those places. Um, you could go over to Patreon, sign up. As we said previously, if you sign up now or ever in the future at the $75 level, you will get monthly art prints, and in the first month you do that, you will get a... a we need to fix this. Anyway, you will get um, a Hysteria Rabbit. Hysteria Rabbit. There you go. Um, we got some really good art prints coming. We should really update these art prints. Yeah, that, that like old hat there. now. They're terrible. Um, and then last but not least is you can go over to Mysterious, which is the shop that I run with my wife, uh, where she designs and makes all kinds of cool products, and you could buy something. Um, we've got hoodie rabbit sets, and we've got skulls, and we've got... Corgi butts. Uh, corgi butts. We sell a lot of corgi butts. I don't understand why, but uh, we do sell a corgi butt that you can pull tissue out of. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Uh, you know what else we need to do? The lucky five. Oh, is that now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Then you better tell people about that. So yes, when this is up on YouTube, don't do it. Oh, the people on YouTube, we're not recording anymore. Oh, yeah, they won't see it. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. YouTube's gone. So that's it. We're finished for today. Now, I mm. want to say we don't expect to be back for another stream for several weeks-ish, a month maybe. Um, I'm moving, maybe. moving house on January 30th, which is two, two weeks away. Uh, we'll be packing next time we should be live streaming. So on the 28th, we will be packing and prepping to move. And then there's Chinese New Year, which I think starts on the... 8th of February and goes for like two weeks. So we may not be back for another stream until the 25th of February. And that's assuming I get all the everything running over at the new house. That'll give um, me plenty of time to get used to uh, having to travel so gosh darn far. You should start taking opium. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. All right, <laughs> I think that's it. So uh, everybody have a good day and enjoy your Chinese New Year and Keep your yeah. cock out of your tiger and um, get about, bent. Get bent. Get out the kitchen. <laughs> jib it up. <laughs> anyway, happy, catch you later. <laughs> happy Chinese New to every. Happy Chinese New Year to everyone, and see you in the new New Year. Bye bye. Bye bye.